right, so what we're doing today is you can see I've kind of got the dash torn apart. Well, the console here. And what I've done is I've got it to where I can get to these um, vacuum solenoids. So you've got you've got five solenoids there. And uh, I'll put a I'll put a diagram right here so that you can look at it. So as, as you can see on the diagram, each one has a purpose, and I don't remember what each one is off the top of my head. Uh, these back two over here, one of them is the, I think this furthest one over here, if I remember right, is the recirculate. And this one over here is the main air flap. And what it does is it determines, basically I think how much fresh air comes in and it defaults to like 20% fresh air or something like that. Um, and the reason they did that is so that um, you kind of get fresh air coming in the cabin. Um, so, what I'm trying to do is figure out which vacuum diaphragms are leaking. So just, um, we'll kind of run through them. You've got over here in the center of the dash behind all this stuff, you have one that does the center vents. And then um, over here, you have down here you have one that does the um, uh, defroster and I think also over here you have one that does the uh, floor vents and so then over here you have one that does maybe that one's the one that does the floor vents anyway you, you'll see on the, di the diagram I posted or I put up. Um, you can freeze frame it, you can screenshot it, you can do whatever you need to do, but uh, print out that diagram and it'll kind of give you some insight on which ones they are. So coming in here, you will see there, if, and you really have to pull this out and this out to kind of get in here to work. Um, there's just not a lot of room in there, but you have kind of a vacuum line manifold that and all it is is a bunch of little Y adapters on a vacuum line that kind of are teeing off to go to these uh, five different vacuum solenoids now the solenoids themselves can leak as well but what we're doing first is just to see which diaphragms are bad now I'm not too concerned about some of them um, the main ones I'm concerned about right now, um, I would like to have for winter, um, the floor level to be able to direct some of the, I, the heat. I don't like heat in my face, blowing in my face. Um, makes my nose stuffy. I just, I prefer heat to be on the floor. And um, so I'm not too concerned about that. It's just kind of a creature comfort for me. Um, and we're not, we're in the heat of summer right now. So like I said, not too concerned about that one. I'm not too concerned about these two over here, the recirculate, cause it's defaulting from what I can tell from, from reading to recirculate, which to me is fine. Um, I would rather it be on recirculate because that's gonna keep, um, it's gonna make the air, the AC cooler. And then that main air flap at 20% outside air, it's okay. Uh, if I could get it to completely close off, which I th think you can, I think what it does is it, when it closes off, it, um, it defaults to full whatever the other damper is doing. You know, so if you've got the other damper on recirculate, then it's doing full recirculate. Or if you've got it to outside air, it's doing full outside air. Whereas the default position on it is 80% um, whatever that is and 20% outside air. 
That's my understanding of it. I'm just doing some reading on it. So that's okay for right now. Um, and the reason I say that's okay is because those two diaphragms are bad. So I will go over how I'm testing these. So let me get y'all closer where you can see. So what we're doing is we are going in here and we are pulling off the vacuum lines that go to, so the top, you've got one that runs in the top of it and then you've got a port coming out towards you. The port coming out towards you is going to be what the line that is going to the vacuum diaphragm. And so, yes, you could have leaks on the ones going in, but I'm focused, like I said, I'm focusing right now to figure out which diaphragms are bad and we'll go from there. We'll get all, we'll make sure all, either all the diaphragms are good or we're going to plug off the ones that are bad um, with some vacuum caps on the little solenoids and we'll address those later. I'll probably check my parts car, see if they're good. If not, I'm just going to weigh whether it's worth putting them in because these things are about $60 each from what I, from what I'm finding. And so I know so far I've got two to three bad ones, so I'm not real, real crazy about spending a hundred, almost $200, uh, to get this thing fully functional. Um, I'm okay with getting it just good enough for me for now and less until I can maybe find some good ones in a junkyard and pay a couple bucks for them or check my parts card and see if it's got some good ones or see if there's a place I can I think there's a place where you can buy kits to rebuild them so we may go that route but um so what I've done here this one is one I've pulled off and I don't know if you, you can't really see in there but I've plugged up my Um, vacuum pump and we'll just pump it up and you can see this is a good one so that one is for the center vents and like I said it's good and I heard the vents close so that one is no problem we're gonna hook it back up. I've also checked the defroster one. There's two sides to the defroster one. One side gets fed off of this center vent one, and the other side gets fed off of its own um, vacuum solenoid. And you'll see, you'll see that if you looked at that diagram. And so the, um, if your center vent is not holding, you can easily get over to the defroster one, um, you know, with just pulling the bottom panel off the dash on the driver's side, you can easily get to that one and you can plug, you could plug that line going to that one and just test the center vent diaphragm. And maybe if you're lucky, the center vent diaphragm is good and the defroster one is bad and like I said the defroster one is easy to get to so we're gonna pull off this one over here and just because it won't hold vacuum doesn't mean that the diaphragm is bad you could have a there's a you know you've got a connection here a rubber hose and then you've got a plastic line that runs over and then you've got another rubber hose connector you could have a broken plastic line. You could have a split rubber hose. The line could have fallen off. You don't know until you look at the other end and you test the line going all the way or plug up straight to the diaphragm, you know, with a known good hose and try to see if it'll hold from there. Uh, you just, this is just kind of like a per, preliminary test and we will, um, we can 
test a little further, but right now this is just easy to get to. And if we're gonna plug these off, I'm gonna plug them off here, not at the other end of them. So that one you can see has a it's a pretty substantial leak, but it, it tries to hold. That kind of to me looks like one that's got a hole in the diaphragm. So I'm gonna leave that one unhooked for now. And these uh, plastic lines are color coded. And you can see that on that dia diagram. And this is the last one here. Like I said, I think this is the one for recirculate, if I recall correctly. And see, these can kind of get kind of difficult to get in here and kind of come in from the bottom too. Like that, hold it. You know what? I'll save y'all some time. It's bad. I've already tested it. So these two are bad. I know for sure. Um, so we're going to plug those. And I think if I remember right, I don't remember if it, it was one of the front ones was bad. I don't remember which one's which. I think it's the very front one, if I remember right. So just some vacuum caps. These think are a little small they are I don't think it says on here it's all it's the closest thing they had they're eighth inch but they should stretch it's kind of hard to get in here so just try not to drop them probably get some needle nose pliers or something and get in here easier So like I said, what we're trying to do is just get this, at least get the major vacuum leaks to see if then we can tie onto the feed line and see if it holds vacuum. Now the vacuum pump will can make up for some small leaks, like that one um, diaphragm, uh, the center vent one, it slowly, slowly leaks down. Because what I've done, since it's been really hot, I left that vacuum pump hooked up. And um, actually would pump it. And it would um, open those center vents for me, which was nice. Because previously, all I've had on this thing with AC is defrosters and the two side vents. And one on each side. So having it open up and have uh, these two center vents up here is nice. So we need to get on, let's get on this one. I think this one, if I recall correctly, is the defroster one, which is good. Looks like it is. So this one, if I remember right, is the foot vent, floor vent. And I think it was bad. Can't remember. So we're going to plug into it. Oh no. It looks like it's good. So it's still holding. Let off our pressure. We'll hook that one back up. And we'll try the one next to it. Yeah. I checked these was it last week or so. I can't remember. I thought one of these was bad over here. Maybe I was mistaken. Let's check this one. I know the defroster one was good. Well, from 
what I remember. That must have been the floor one right there. Uh, we'll go look and see where that one runs. That's leaking pretty fast, so we're gonna plug that one up. It definitely would be a pretty good vacuum leak. Yeah, all they had was this one thing, uh, vacuum caps. It was the only package of it, and there was one missing out of the package. And so, they uh, supposed to be five, and there was only four in it. I was pretty sure I only needed three caps, and so they gave me like a 10% discount or some 20% discount. If there was one missing. All right, so that's three plugged up, and the other two tested good. Now let's go see where some of these are. Uh, we've got this red with yellow stripe on here and we're gonna go find it over here on the uh, driver side. It looks like that's where it's going. And then I'll show you where the other two are.